Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna do a camera comparison between the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Samsung S21 Ultra. Starting with the iPhone, we have three cameras in the back just like last year, except these are brand new cameras essentially, brand new lenses and everything, and also powered by the new A15 Bionic chip. All the cameras on the iPhone are all 12 megapixels, even the one in the front, the selfie camera. So we have our telephoto here, we have our wide here, and we have our ultra wide here. And again, 12 megapixel selfie in the front as well. Comparing that to the Samsung, which took a slightly different approach. We have a 40 megapixel camera here. We have a ultra wide 12 megapixel. We have a wide angle 108 megapixel. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is a 108 megapixel. And we have two telephoto cameras which are 10 megapixels so one here and one here and I'm going to do a video comparison in 4k this Samsung can actually do 8k video recording but I'm gonna keep it at 4k to do an apples to apples comparison I'm also gonna take a whole bunch of pictures during the day and in low light situations I'm gonna zoom in and and that's really the other thing that's different as well where the iPhone has a max digital zoom uh, 15x the Samsung has a max digital zoom of 100x. So in terms of what's on paper, the Samsung so far sounds better, but let's find out. Starting with ultra wide lens, they both look pretty good. Now on the iPhone, I did pick the standard mode. You can change the color temperature and it, it's really a matter of preference, but in terms of image quality, they both look pretty good. Now as you zoom in, this is the wide angle where the Samsung actually has the 108 megapixel camera. So in theory, if I zoom into the Samsung image, it should be of higher quality. But just normally looking at this, they both look fine, of very good quality. Now, as you start to zoom in, you can't tell too much here, but the Samsung does look a tad more clear besides being the besides the color temperature. Now, when you super zoom in, and I mean, the Samsung can go in way more than this, but at this point, it's very clear that the Samsung is the winner because the iPhone looks blurry where the Samsung still looks clear. Here's another example where I took a picture of the lizard with the telephoto lens zoomed in, and the Samsung does look much better than the iPhone. I mean, the iPhone still looks good, but the lizard looks so much more clear with the Samsung. Now, when we move into the ultra wide lens again, this is these are zoomed in pictures, but when we go to the ultra wide lens, when we look at this during the daytime, they both look fine. There is a bit of a color temperature difference. Now, when we go to the wide angle, you could see that the iPhone really likes the portrait mode. So by default, it blurs out the back so it could make the action figure pop out. This is not true in the case of the Samsung. Granted, the Samsung also has a portrait mode should you choose to use it. Now again, zooming in with the telephoto lens, this is still optical zoom, and you could tell that the Samsung does look slightly better compared to the iPhone. And it is way more clear when you get into digital zoom because the action figure looks so much more clear. The eyes, the hair, the fingers, the clothes, everything looks way better on the Samsung. Taking the action figure inside to test out the low light abilities, it is daytime outside, but I have closed the blinds and it's actually much darker in this room than what the cameras are showing you. But you could kind of tell that, you know, they both come out pretty clear, but the iPhone is taking in more light and it's most evident in this telephoto lens. Now the Samsung image is still very clear, but the iPhone is getting in more light. It's able to take in more light. So it, from first appearance, the iPhone does look like a better image. But testing this further, when I zoomed in with the Samsung to a level that the iPhone can't get to, it still looks pretty clean for a very dark room. So this was a hard decision to say which one is better. It's more of a, the iPhone gets in more light, but the Samsung still makes pretty clear images. The next test is a macro shot of my solar panel. So I took a normal shot of it so you guys could get a sense of what it looks like. And when I do a macro shot of it, it's basically a super zoomed in view. But instead of zooming in with the phone, you just bring the phone really, really close to this, maybe two to four centimeters away and it could focus. Now, most phones cannot do this, but the Samsung and the new iPhone can. And they both came up pretty good. It, it almost looks like the Samsung can zoom in a tad bit more 
but they both came out very very clear you could see the little grooves the indentations the lines everything looks pretty good now for a nighttime low light test i took a picture of my solar lights so you guys get a sense of what they look like again there is a bit of a color temperature difference it's most evident when you look on the ground the grass and everything but as you zoom in, they both look pretty good. But once again, it does look like the iPhone takes in a bit more light than the Samsung. So this is probably more a matter of preference than anything else. They both come out pretty good. Jumping into the video section, they're both filmed at 4K 30 frames per second. They both support 4K 60 frames per second. And the Samsung alone can also do 8K 24 frames per second, which the iPhone cannot. Now, at first glance, it does look like the iPhone has a little more light coming in in this lower light situation. And this might be a matter of preference, but one thing that the iPhone does, does look like it does better is when you pay attention to the left side of the fire right in the fire pit, it looks like the iPhone is doing a more accurate representation of it versus the Samsung. Now when I zoom in, even in video mode, again at 4K 30 frames per second, the Samsung looks way better than the iPhone in terms of the video quality. It just looks much more clear in the zoomed in mode. Now I'm recording on both phones under 4K 30 frames per second, so you guys get a sense of video quality indoors. Now it is daytime outside and I do have a couple lights on me, but I don't have anything special on the phones and I'm also using their built-in microphones on both phones and in post-processing, which is the only thing I'm gonna touch is I'm gonna switch the audio in between each phone so you guys could hear the difference of what it's actually recording. Again, no external mics hooked up or anything like that. And all the pictures and video quality are untouched. However it was recorded, however it was imported, that's how I'm gonna show it to you guys. So. Talking about the differences. So let's actually start from the photos. So daytime photos, ultra wide and wide lens were both very comparable, both very good quality. Now the Samsung, the wide angle camera can go up to 108 megapixels, which is pretty crazy in my mind for a cell phone. So if you zoom in, you could get a little more detail out of that. But in terms of just looking at the pictures, they both looked really, really good. So very comparable. Here is where the Samsung now starts to outshine the iPhone. So the Samsung on the telephoto lens, which is the one that you typically zoom in, that one the Samsung did a lot better. And the more you zoom in, the more it, it looks much more clear on the Samsung. As far as video quality, all the recordings I did were in 4K 30 frames per second. Now the Samsung can actually go up to 8K video recording, I believe at 24 frames per second but I didn't do that because obviously 8K quality is gonna look better than 4K quality, but I'm just comparing it from an apples to apples comparison. So getting to the results with 4K video quality, I have to say that I think the iPhone did slightly better than the Samsung. And this was most notable when I was videoing the fire pit. When you look at it side by side, the iPhone did a better representation of the fire. Now my favorite part of these modern day cell phone cameras are their ability to take low light pictures and they are both phenomenal at this. The iPhone, I feel like probably brings in a little more light. It probably has more exposure, but the images come out really crisp and clean, a very good quality. The Samsung, I feel like doesn't bring in as much light, but the pictures still come out really good, really crisp, really clean, especially when you zoom in, it looks even better than the iPhone. Now a few weeks back we were walking outside and the sky was very clean, very clear and saw the Big Dipper, which is a real life scenario, right? This happens. I didn't have a tripod with me, nothing like that. Took out the cell phone and took a picture and it's just handheld picture taken of me, of me trying to hold the Big Dipper and the quality is phenomenal. And it's crazy because when I show this picture to people, they get surprised that a cell phone handheld took this picture. And it's not really a fair comparison to the iPhone because the iPhone wasn't even released back then. So I didn't have that to do a comparison. But the, fa the fact of the matter is Samsung did an amazing job of taking that picture. So 
I'm having trouble saying which phone is better for nighttime shots. So I would say that it, it, it appears that the iPhone is better from the sample pictures I took in terms of bringing in more light. But in terms of crisp and real life scenarios like that, it looks like the Samsung is better, but I can't even say that because the iPhone wasn't there for a comparison. So I'm gonna say that they were both really good quality because I, I think when I look at both pictures, they both look really, really good. To wrap up the video, I switched over to the selfie camera so you guys could get a sense of this as well. And I think the overall winner, even though there were categories that one was better than the other, I think the overall winner is the Samsung. And the reason for that, in my mind, is because when I want to take a picture, Samsung pops up first in terms of, oh, where's the Samsung? I want to take a quick picture. But it's not to say that the iPhone was bad or anything like that. The iPhone delivered very good results, especially low light pictures, very, very high quality. 4K video, I think, was even slightly better than the Samsung's. Granted, the Samsung, again, could go to 8K, but I think the overall winner was the Samsung. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. As always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.